Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. I just wanted to thank Jillian again for letting me do this. I'm very excited. Um, so just to reintroduce myself, my name is Tony Hoopengarner. I am a NASM certified personal trainer. Um, I am also going through my level one nutrition certification with Precision right now, and I'm also an elite level fitness competitor. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about reverse dieting. Um, most of my presentation is here on my laptop, so I'm going to be going back and forth a little bit. Um, so today we're going to be talking about reverse dieting, uh, what it is, when you think you should do it or think about doing it, why you should consider doing it, um, and how to do it. Now, I will say this, uh, I didn't have a clue what reverse dieting was until I started competing, um, but I've come to realize now that reverse dieting can be beneficial to anyone, um, not just athletes and competitors. Uh, the fitness and nutrition industry has come quite a long way uh, in the past few years, but diet culture still rears its ugly head if you really pay attention on social media. Many people, um, mostly women, are taught basically to just eat less and move more and that they'll lose weight, right? And that may be true, but then what? What do we do once our calories drop and we've lost that weight? Most people either, you know, reward themselves and almost immediately put back on what they worked so hard to lose, or they kind of stay in calorie deficit for a long time, which also causes a lot of negative adaptations from metabolism. So first we're going to talk about what a reverse diet is, okay? So basically a reverse diet is a slow, steady, controlled increase in your calories. The goal of a reverse diet is to combat the negative metabolic adaptations that come along with being in a calorie deficit for an extended amount of time. When you're in a calorie deficit for too long, your body adapts to those low calories, which ultimately makes it harder to lose fat once you've um, gotten to that point, once your body's reached that point. Your body, the human body doesn't care how good you look and how lean you are. Um, it wants to protect itself at all costs. The human body doesn't like being too lean. Uh, evolutionary, this is an evolutionary thing, and since our caveman days, our metabolisms really haven't changed that much. Ultimately, uh, ultimately as we diet, our metabolic rate naturally decreases. Reverse dieting is building back up those calories with the goal of the body relearning to expend more energy. Because like I said before, as, our, as we diet down, our body adapts and outputs less it burns less as we eat less because it just adapts to those low calories, which isn't good. One thing I do want to touch on really quickly um, is the myth of starvation mode. So yes, the more we diet, the harder it becomes to lose fat, but you would literally have to stop eating food um, for your body to actually starve. Um, I do have a study that I can reference um, about that if anyone has any questions or wants to view that study. So that's what reverse dieting is, okay? We're going to talk about when you want to think about reverse dieting. So if your calories are already very low and you can't lose any more weight, that is a huge indicator that your body is just adapted to what you're eating, adapted to those low calories, and then it might be time to reverse diet. Also, ladies, if you're having infertility issues or if you've lost your menstrual cycle, um, that's a huge indicator, okay? A woman's cycle is a huge indicator of her overall health. Um, and that's, that's, I know that's a very personal thing, but it, it's very, very true. I hope that all women on here do their research about that kind of stuff as well. Um, if you're having mood swings, that's not good. That's a sign you might be under eating. If you're chronically constipated, this happens with a lack of healthy fats in your diet. Um, let's see here. Um, if you're always cold, if you've been dieting for as long as you can remember, if you're constantly restricting your calories and then finding yourself binging on the weekends, you know, you're super tight, super controlled with what you eat during the weekend, Friday and Saturday comes and it's an all out blowout of food. 
that's not good. It's a sign you might need to just do a slow and steady increase over time so that stops happening. Um, if you lost a bunch of weight and just stayed at those low calories, we want to reverse after that. If you have no energy, um, if you're having brain fogs, can't focus, um, low energy levels, if your workouts suck, if you can't make it through your workouts without feeling like you got hit by a truck, that's a sign you might be under eating. Okay, um, if you're having trouble sleeping and uh, issues recovering from your workouts, that's another sign as well, okay? So those are all signs of when you might want to reverse diet. Okay, next we're gonna talk about why. So all of those things I listed above do totally suck, okay? Um, so if those aren't enough to consider reverse dieting, I'm gonna talk about a few more things, okay? Uh, chronic dieting at too low calories can majorly disrupt your endocrine system. The endocrine system, like your thyroid hormone, hormones, adrenals, and sex hormones like testosterone and uh, estrogen, <laughs> are lipid-derived hormones for women, which means those hormones are carried through your fat cells. Um, so things like that, and um, if your energy takes a huge hit, if you're chronically not eating enough healthy fats, um, your muscle proteins will start to break down, which um, means increased for increased risk of muscle loss as well. Um, also things like nutrient deficiencies can cause things like hair loss if you're not eating enough and not getting the proper nutrients, okay? Um, and a lot of vitamins as well are fat soluble. So, you know, even if you're taking them, if you're not, you know, putting healthy fats into your body, they're not going to be absorbed properly either. Um, also my personal, my personal approach to dieting when it comes to my clients is to diet on as many calories as possible so we aren't miserable during the dieting process. Dieting doesn't have to suck, okay? It doesn't have to be this horrible thing where you're, you know, skipping parties and like bringing Tupperware to social events and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be like that. Um, so for example, I do have a client that's working with me right now uh, on a cut for her wedding. Um, but when I reviewed her two-week food journal that I require all of my clients to give me before we start, she was only eating, you guys, roughly around 1,300 calories a day. That's really low. Um, and that's too low for a cut. Uh, according to my National Academy of Sports Medicine workbooks, a diet under 1,200 calories a day should actually be supervised by a medical doctor. And she was a little too close uh, to that for comfort for me to start her on a cut of that low of calories. So what we did was, uh, for 12 weeks, we did a reverse diet and she didn't gain a single pound. And the beauty of that is we got her from 1300 calories a day to up to over 2100 calories a day. And what we did is, we did a little bit of cardio, we increased her calories week to week, slowly through those 12 weeks and we incorporated some heavy, heavy lifting um, and built her a pretty amazing shape. Now at that point, 2100 calories is a much better place to cut from than 1300. I have tracked at that low of calories when I've competed and I couldn't imagine starting a diet when I'm only eating 1300 calories a day. That just sounds pretty awful. Um, and at that point, dieting does suck. So like I said, we essentially you want to be able to build back up to maintenance and then cut your calories down. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now we're gonna talk about how to actually implement this into your own um, nutrition program if you're kind of doing that yourself, okay? Um, you might wanna take notes for this, so if you wanna you know, pull out your phone, type some notes up, or grab a pen and paper, please feel free to do that. So what you're going to need to do first is calculate your current calories and establish starting macro targets, okay? Um, to avoid jumping up your calories too quickly, you'll need to know how many calories you're currently eating to maintain your body weight. From there, you'll need to establish like a new baseline of macros. So what you're going to want to do is track everything you eat for like a week or two. Um, let's say that's 1,800 calories is your average, okay? So, like I said, starting baseline, we're just going to say 1,800. Next, you're going to want to set your protein target at 1 gram per pound of body weight on you, okay? 
specifically 150 pounds, that's 150 grams of protein per day is your target, okay? Um, then what you need to do is subtract your protein calories from your current total calorie goal to determine the remaining calories, okay? Protein is four calories per gram. So that puts you at 60, or I'm sorry, at 600 calories of protein per day. Basically, you're just subtracting 600 from 1800, which gives you 1200 remaining calories for your fats and your carbs, okay? So you can split your carbs and fats up however you want to split them up. You can do a 40-60 split, a 60-40 split. It doesn't matter. Just remember that these numbers can all be manipulated however you see fit, okay? For, um, we'll, we'll go with this here. <laughs> I wrote, if you're a carb lover like me, um, I would do like a 60% 60, 60 carbs, 40% fats at that point. Um, so for 60% carbs, you'll multiply, multiply 1,200 by, point, by 0 0.6, which gives you 720 calories in carbs. And then you'll want to multiply 1,200 by 0 0.4, which brings your fat calories to 480 for the day, okay? To change these numbers, just remember that protein and carbs have 4 calories per gram and fats have 9 calories per gram, okay? Which means... 720 calories from your carbs gives you 180 grams per day, and that 480 calories from fats per day gives you 53 grams of fats per day, okay? So for 1,800 calories, that gives you 150 grams of carbs, that gives you 53 grams of fat per day, and 180 grams of carbs per day, okay? Now, I know one of the big questions is, how quickly and how much should you increase on those fats and those carbs? This is a very personal choice. Um, how aggressively or conservatively you decide to increase is totally up to you. Um, and you should take consideration with like your relationship with food, what your current fitness goals are, what you kind of like want your lifestyle to be as well, okay? Um, for a more conservative approach, I would start by increasing your fats and your carbs two to 5% per week, okay? For a little more aggressive approach, you could start by a five to 10% increase per week on those fats and those carbs. Another thing to consider when reverse dieting is also a slow reduction of the amount of cardio you're doing. Um, a lot of times people that have been dieting for a long time are also doing a ton of cardio. A lot, you know, a lot of athletes and competitors, but also just people who are like so gung-ho on the bandwagon of losing weight and think that doing endless amounts of cardio is the way to go. It's also something to consider backing off cardio slowly when you're reverse dieting too. So what, uh, what I would recommend is reducing your uh, cardio a little bit every week as well over those 12 weeks of reverse dieting and increasing your heavy lifting since your calorie um, your calories are going to increase per week as well. So my recommendation would be this. Weeks one through three, complete two rounds of 45-minute cardio per week, okay? Two 45-minute sessions per week. Week four through six, reduce that to two 30-minute sessions of cardio per week. Week seven through nine, to 15 minute sessions of cardio per week, and then weeks 10 through 12 reduce even further to just a step goal of like between eight and 12,000 steps a day, okay? Which is, you know, a couple mile walk per day, you know? Um, so yeah, um, in closing, that, that's all I have in reverse dieting for you guys. Um, I'm very excited for the q and A. I I hope you guys got something out of this. I just wanna say thank you for taking the time to listen to me speak about this. Um, making sure people are feeling their bodies is something I'm very passionate about. Um, so the big, the big thing here is, is guys, the human body is not meant to live in a calorie deficit and to be truly healthy, you do need to just learn and understand how to fuel your body properly so you can live life to the fullest. Um, so thanks again, guys, and uh, have a great day. Thank you.